Hi, this is your host, Laura Powers, and I'm here with DK. DK is an astrologer, and if you've listened to the show in the past, you might have heard DK on the show. We were talking about 2020 predictions in terms of astrology, and so now we're going to be revisiting all of that as well as discussing predictions and themes for 2021. As we're recording, this is in the pre-shadow for Mercury retrograde, and we've already had some challenges <laughs> being started, so hopefully it will go smoothly. Thanks so much for coming back on the show, DK. <laughs> I'm so glad to be back. I'm glad you invited me back. You know, a lot of people uh, last year stopped inviting me to things. Um, <laughs> I, I would have never blamed the messenger, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, but, you know, cancel culture was all the rave. So, yeah, yeah. Um, Last year, we were talking about, you know, what's going to happen. Um, and we had six eclipses last year, which is just unheard of. Uh, rarely ever happens. Usually we have two sets of two eclipses every year. So this year we're back to um, our, you know, four eclipse schedule, which is kind of nice. But, um, you know, I, I tuned in as I was tuning in at the beginning of last year, I just got like, there's going to be massive societal breakdown and but I couldn't have fathomed that it was going to be what it was so <laughs> I mean I think we could just look at the themes and then you don't know exactly how it's going to play out but but as it played out I, you know it very much made sense to me based on the conversation that we had and also I felt a lot of that stuff brewing kind of intuitively psychically yeah. and the same thing you don't always know exactly what it's going to be you just know that the themes and the feelings and you know what's going to happen but yeah lots of disruption you know chaos things uh becoming unsettled i think we all <laughs> yeah felt that this past year yeah and then we were talking about the election that they're you know mercury retrograde so the the election astrology presidential election was very similar to um the 2000 election you know with the hanging chads in florida and bush bush and gore and um, we, like you were saying, I mean, we knew there's going to be some kind of delay or some weirdness because there's a Mercury retrograde. But um, I mean, I think we don't know what's going on right now. You know, I mean, there are a lot of theories out there. Um, there's so much weirdness, you know, with the like the whole capital is still fenced off and there's, all, you know, National Guard yeah. that are going to be there till March and Vegas isn't paying bets until March 5th on the election so um oh really really yeah know. it would really not surprise me if we don't i would not be surprised if there's not another presidential election at some point in 2021 really really wow that would be fascinating well we're one of the things that's happening right now we are literally in unprecedented times in so many ways and all these things that no one would have ever imagined are playing out like over and over and over again. So that's really interesting that yeah. you say that. Um, hmm. Well, we shall see. I, I do feel intuitively that there's still some drama to play out at the Capitol. And again, I don't know exactly what that means, but it, it feels kind of like a powder keg to me. Like there's just like just something waiting to explode a bit. And I'm just praying that it's, you know, safe for as many people as possible and hopefully yeah. uh, not too violent. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, and so this this year, the astrology of this year, in some ways, it's not as dramatic as last year, which I think is great. But we've got um, a lot of Uranus, Saturn, and Aquarius in the mix, and so um, are some intense, <laughs> some intense planets coming together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Aquarius, I mean, so we had a big shift at the end of last year. Jupiter and Saturn moved from Capricorn into Aquarius. And Saturn takes about three years to go through each sign. Jupiter moves through each sign in a year. So, um, but having both of those in Capricorn all of last year, along with Pluto in Capricorn and a series of eclipses in Capricorn and Cancer, the opposite sign. So Capricorn is like the sign of big world systems. Um, it's the World Bank, it's the US government, it's the medical system, it's the you know highway transportation system. So this is an area that um, since 2009, when Pluto moved in there, has been really a center of focus. And Capricorn 
Capricorn and Aquarius traditionally are both ruled by Saturn. So Saturn's the authority, the judge, the cop, the stern father figure, kind of the, the uh, <clears throat> disciplinarian boss of the Zodiac. And Capri in, in his sign of Capricorn, Saturn gets to kind of do his thing in a very hierarchical, old establishment, you know, structured kind of way. So it's, you know, what a lot of people grew up with where, you know, you go to, you go to school, you get good grades, you go to college, you try to get good grades in college, you get out of college, you get a job in the field that, you know, I mean, this is the American dream, right? From, right. from a few decades ago, at least. I was going to say and, yeah, you know, 50, 50s until maybe 2000. Right. And I feel like it's, it's definitely changed. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, this whole idea of like you work your way up step by step and then, you know, you have money and wealth and status or whatever it is you want and then you can retire and take it easy. So there's, that's a very Capricorn vibe. Aquarius, Saturn's other sign, and Aquarius is co-ruled by Uranus. Um, so one of the three signs with two ruling planets. So Saturn and Uranus are squaring off three times this year. And um, that's February 17th, June 14th, and December 24th. So that, that Saturn-Uranus square happens every 20 to 25 years-ish. Um, and they're usually kind of pretty big moments. So tell me so, those dates again. Yeah, so it's um, February 17th, June 14th, and December 24th. So we get a lovely Christmas present to look forward to um, at the end of 2021. And, and it actually could be. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you why I have hope for this year in a way that I didn't for last year. <laughs> and, okay. uh, just remember to ask me, uh, please. <laughs> so um, Uranus, the modern ruler of Aquarius, is in Taurus, fixed personal Earth. So Earth signs relate to the material world. Capricorn is the universal Earth sign. Uranus and Taurus, um, which the last time that happened was in the 1930s. And, you know, we had the rise of fascism, communism, Nazism, um, mass genocide, mass starvation, Dust Bowl in the U.S. I mean, it was rough times, right? Yeah. So things are, you know, there's different astrology um, around this than there was in the 30s, but we're definitely seeing a lot of the same themes playing out in the sense that you have these oligarchs or autocratic would-be rulers who are using, you know, manipulating things on the game board in order to try to kind of collect all the money. I mean, I think one of the places we're seeing that is with big tech, right? You know, the, so... Um, Bezos at Amazon and Zuckerberg at Facebook and Dorsey at Twitter. I mean, these guys meet billions, if not trillions of, you know, I don't know. Once you get past the, up to a billion, I have no idea how much money that really is. I saw a visualization. It's kind of hard to, to fathom. Uh, and I, yeah. I just to jump in and say that I, I still feel so many World War II themes playing out. I, I felt it last year. I still feel it playing out. And it's interesting because I feel like karmically, a lot of these things are they're wearing a different face now. So it's like some people aren't seeing it, but it's still a lot of the, the same issues. And I, and I do have a lot of concerns about personal freedoms and who's making these decisions. And also that sometimes things seem like they're light or good. And then there's this really dark, ugly side underneath it. Like when Hitler came into power, a lot of people thought this guy's awesome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? right? That's why there was so much support in the beginning. And then like this other stuff came out. So I think we really have to be watchful and mindful of things that might appear to be good on the surface or, or good for a group of people or good for the nation, et cetera. And then underneath you're like, Oh, we, what's this other stuff showing up here. And then the longer it plays out, the, the more it starts to become clear. Right. And if it plays out, the problem is if it plays out too long, you can't get out of it. Right. I mean, I well, think not, that's not they, easily anyway. I mean, like, yeah. like, yeah, I got out of it in, in World War II, but it was, you know, it was a rough ride. Yeah. And you had, were you saying that you've seen a, a lot of souls are reincarnating from World War yeah. II to show up and try to avoid the same thing happening I, I that happened back then? I think that's part of it, but it's also just repeating the same lesson and pattern to hopefully try to heal to an even greater degree. So a lot of people that were specifically alive in the UK and Germany, I'm really seeing here, um, wow. incarnated. Yeah. Wow. And 
uh, yeah, it's, I'm just getting goosebumps saying that. I'm really feeling it. I mean, some of, several of my clients where I've done readings and that's literally come up like things with the Holocaust and, you know, things like that. And it's interesting because a lot of things have kind of switched sides because I, you know, I do have concern for freedom uh, in the United States. And, you know, we're originally, and if you, if you believe the, that idea, you know, the home of democracy, the home of, you know, you know, we were like the saviors, one of the saviors of, of the world or whatever in World War II. And now I feel like it's, it's almost actually this concern of it coming from the inside here in the United yeah. States that we really have to be aware of. And, yeah. I, and I'm, not, I'm not trying to be conspiracy theorist like here. I just, I'm not saying it's a particular side or anything. I'm just literally talking about spiritual themes here, just, just to be clear for all the listeners. Yeah, I think that's important. And also, I think it's really important. So, you know, we've got Saturn, the old ruler of Aquarius, right? And Saturn's even in Aquarius, which is a universal air sign, universal mental sign. A positive Aquarius is totally utopian. It's like, you know, we can take, we can take the world, we can tweak the systems, we can change the way we think and think about things. So air sign, thinking, and communicating. And we can make it so everybody gets their needs met and everybody has enough. It's a really beautiful idea. Kind of like the Great Reset, you know, and Klaus Schwab, who sounds kind of like he could have been, you know, one of Hitler's henchmen, get the classic bad guy accent, you know, Nazi accent, whatever. <laughs> but, you know, so th there's this great, a lot of great ideas where it's like, hey, let's, let's uh, stop using so many, you know, so much oil and let's like do better than recycling and let's kind of restructure everything. And that's Aquarian utopianism says, if we do that, we can make this paradise on earth. So there, there's a beautiful thing there, but the, the flip side of Aquarius, and I think this is where you get Saturn, the old God and Uranus kind of the, well, even older God actually, but Saturn's more structure. Like let's do things step-by-step. Step. Let's do things the tried and true proven way. And Uranus is like, let's blow all the shit up and burn it down. And, and then there's this new, you know, disposition or, or these new ideas coming in and um, we'll just all move to Mars if it blows up, you know, I mean, that Uranus would be like very Elon Musk type energy. But so having these two heavyweight planets battling, you know, throughout most of the year and those three dates that we talked about earlier are the exact dates. It sets up this really interesting situation where I do think everyone is going to be asked to or required to make some choices that, you know, normally we wouldn't want to have to make. And ultimately what I see with, with this year, and I think the first half of the year is going to be really chaotic. There are going to be some major, like, I mean, we've already seen it in the first month, right? Like major manic yeah. ups and like disastrous downs. And then as we get further into the year, I think we have a lot of cause for hope. So um, I'm gonna try to just chunk this down here. But Aquarius, Aquarius is like the universal mind, right? So when that's working well, then we can use the mind and we can use our thoughts and the way we communicate and what we communicate about to create a world that's fair and, and just for everybody. In order to do that though, we have to go to the opposite sign of Aquarius, Leo, which is the sign of the, the king, the queen, the entertainer, the, you know, the just fully creative, fully self-expressive um, being. Because in astrology, all of these polarities, the opposite houses, opposite signs, they're really the same energy, you know, so they're contained, they're, Aquarius is sort of just the same energy as Leo, but taken to an extreme. It's like, in a, in a way, isn't it like the, the opposite side of the same coin? Like you're, you're looking yeah. at kind of the flip side in a way, but it's still yeah. part of one. Okay. Yeah. So that axis, Leo Aquarius says, hey, in order to be Aquarius, a member of a collective or an enlightened society, I have to, Leo, first be, be an individual. I, you know, so I have to be individuated. I have to actually be capable of forming my own opinions, my own beliefs, thinking about things intelligently, um, you know, analyzing things to see what works and what doesn't work, what, you know, what's better, what's not better. And I really feel like we're in a, situ a kind of perilous situation this year because the 
I would say the mass of the American people don't seem to be capable of discerning, you know, what's true from what's false. And there's, so there's a lot of, um, and I'm sure you saw this as well last year. It's like the, the main media talking point is this. And then everybody on your social media feed is talking about that. And then from one day yeah. to the next, it's no longer Black Lives Matter. Now it's COVID, you know, or yeah, vice there's, versa. There's these major switches. And the other thing I was just discussing with a friend is that the, the breadth and the variety of what's being shown um, in media has gotten more and more narrow. Like there used to be a lot more different viewpoints, a lot of different information, different sources. And I feel like it's just kind of given ratcheted down and down at the same time, very polarizing. So you have people with completely different viewpoints that, you know, they're seeing whatever supports their perspective when they search or when they look for that reason. So I think that that's part of what's leading to this kind of powder keg situation of like, um, it's either this or it's this, which is interesting because in a way it's like the two sides of the same coin in a way it's like these kind of opposites yeah. but at, the, at the same time it's still kind of the same instead of like there's so much gray in the world and and yeah. color you know <laughs> yeah. and it's like we're just seeing these kind of two things and also one thing that concerns me is this um idea of you have to be one or the other you have to choose and also if you don't you're a bad person you're the enemy um, and this controlling of thought and even the lack of ability for us to explore different ideas. Uh, I, so yeah. these are the things that are, are very concerning to me um, as a whole. Yeah. And that's, to me, that's the shadow side of Aquarius on a collective level is, interesting. it's interesting, the American Revolution was Pluto and Cap, the last time Pluto was in Capricorn, that was the American Revolution. Plu by the time the French Revolution came about, that was Pluto and Aquarius. So Pluto is this generational transformational energy, right? So there's violence and bloodshed in both wars. But in France, you had the reign of terror, which is basically anybody on the other side. We're, you know, the streets are running with blood, right? We right. behead anybody who doesn't ex completely accept our point of view. And I feel I was, like I was beheaded yeah. during all of that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, but I'm part of it is like I've I've been through these things. They can be pretty rough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have a deal with uh, I have a deal with the creator. I'm like, I'll come back again, but no torture, um, no no imprisonment. You know, it's like I'm not signing up for that again. But yeah, so. You know, I think that's one thing that if I could say one thing that feels really, really vital for this year, it's we really have to question everything and question mm -hmm. everything we're getting from the media because they're, you know, the media, whether you're on the, I mean, I don't know if there is a right media at this point, but there's presumably some kind of alt-right, you know, whatever. If you're on um, Twitter or, you know, one of those social media platforms, you know, you're probably in an echo chamber where you're hearing your own beliefs and opinions that you think are your own reinforced over and over. And we need to question all of that because. And I'll be honest, I think it's happening yeah. on the left side, too. Like, I, I really do feel that it's happening on either side. Now, the, the talking points on each side are different, but that's part of my yeah. issue with what's happening right now is that I feel like everything is being skewed and. The, we all it's very hard to discern the truth so i completely agree with you on that point yeah and i don't think you can get the truth from the mainstream media at this point or most of the social media i mean, i got off all the social media platforms at the end of last year i was just like i don't want mark zuckerberg to have my data and i don't you know I, it was like he just got, got enough money without profiting from you know listening to me even when my phone's off and i don't have facebook turned on so yeah, I feel like that's really, really important is that we need to question everything and we need to tune into what do we want? Because what most of us want isn't this or this, right? We want, right. So we want, we want a world that really, yeah. We want a world where everybody, you know, I think most people are basically decent, good people, you know, and they want everybody to have enough. They want to make sure, you know, I want to make sure I have enough. I want freedom. I want to be able to do the things I want to do. So I don't feel like that. I feel like there's going to be a massive awakening process to the level of mind control and the level of funneling people into the queue. 
which yeah. the word you know, that word actually um, etym- etymologically comes from the abattoir, like the, the slaughterhouse. You know, so um, mm, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think what I feel is that we we want just not trust. We want diversity of choice, meaning like it's it's not this polarity of this or that, because I don't feel like that's spiritually reflective of the world as it is. I'll just say that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I think one of the things that we're going to see is a lot of bullying, a lot more bullying, a lot more efforts at, at main, you know, asserting control by the big money power people who, you know, I feel, I mean, I feel like the, the Stalins and Hitlers aren't going to be government heads of governments they're going to be heads of corporate global conglomerates you know and we're already kind of seeing that um in the build-up to this year but ultimately it it really is a in a lot of ways i think a make or break year for freedom in the world and it's you know there are a lot of people around the world who have major concerns about um you know so the way things are being handled and um the seemingly rapid erosion of human freedom so I think one of the things, you know, the Aquarius is the sign of the internet and the last um, Saturn Uranus square period in 99, 2000 was the big tech boom, you know, and that was the point where really everybody started getting on the internet, right? Like social media was just getting, I think there was still MySpace was still there. Yeah. But, but you know, people were getting on, uh, embracing the internet and it was still this kind of feeling of like wide open possibility. Like you Have can you learn all this. Like there's so much of the opportunity and so yeah. Many, yeah. Mm-hmm. So amidst all of the censorship that's trying to happen right now, I, I feel like what it's going to do is it's going to drive people into super innovator mode, which is a real positive of Uranus and Aquarius. And we're going to start seeing like, I mean, I actually see society starting to split off into separate groups that almost don't acknowledge that each other exists. And that might not be a bad thing short term in the sense of, you know, all the people who believe like wholeheartedly in um, we all need to get the COVID vaccine and everybody has to have the vaccine or we're all going to die. Those people are kind of over here in their cities and in their places, you know, and they're here on their Internet. And then there are going to be a lot of other people that are like, I don't want to be controlled like that. I want to have autonomy over my body. I want to be able to make my own choices. And they're going to all be purged from, you know, what's now traditional social media. And that, but I feel like there's going to be a lot of innovation that comes out of this. So, yeah, uh, I mean, the first half of the year, I think is going to be, it's going to require a lot of patience and a lot of, um, the more we can sort of sit back and not get hooked into these narratives, you know, and start and just look at, you know, well, how is that working out for those people that have that narrative? Then I think we're going to be, you know, individually, we'll be in a better position and, and, and also really connecting with like-minded people and encouraging, you know, it's like people are, a lot of people are having a really rough time right now. I think it's it's important to connect with like-minded people, but at the same time, not to only connect with like-minded people, because I feel like that's part of why we have such a serious problem right now is this, like, yeah. I only want to hear one perspective. And the truth is there are so many perspectives. And so, yeah, yeah it's definitely going to be an interesting year, but I agree with you about a lot of the themes before that were relating to government and shifting into coming from business. And there is obviously a major interplay, especially in the United States between government and business. Like in a lot of ways, our government is run by business, at least behind the scenes. I mean, that may not appear to be obviously what's happening, but that's what's happening. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Behind the scenes. Yeah. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah. It's interesting that we're doing, you know, we're recording this on full moon and Leo. So opposite Jupiter and Saturn in Aquarius and square um, Mars and Uranus in Taurus. So I mean, you've got this just major lightning rod kind of astrology and the whole GameStop Wall Street thing that blew up. You know, it's like, uh, here's a a bunch of citizens who got together and said, hey, we could game the system. We could figure out how to make money like the people on Wall Street do. And then as soon as the hedge fund people on Wall Street started going bankrupt, the government steps in, right, and shuts it down. 
I think that's I, too yeah, I, I saw that and and I was like, oh, I don't like I don't like this this that's yeah. happening. I know it's complex, so you know we're not giving any advice or anything here, but but it's there's some <laughs> some uh, difficult dynamics <laughs> at play here. But also, I feel like that's the kind of thing that we're going to see a lot of this year, and and it's these kind of heavy handed um, corporate government whatever actions that help people realize, and, you know, so I, one of the things that I'm seeing as I'm looking around is, oh, you know, people are like, hey, I'm not a Trump supporter. I'm just trying to make money trading stocks. And they told me I could make money and I was making money and now they're taking it all away. And so, you know, money, if anything unites Americans, it's money, right? So I think what, one of the things that we're gonna see is a lot of opportunities where people are like, oh yeah, you know, that person that I thought was my enemy because my left-wing friends told me that you know anybody that does whatever is you know a domestic terrorist and they're evil, but they're actually the same as me. And yeah. I feel like that's a, that's a huge opportunity that by the, my hope is, and I don't wanna go on record as saying that this is gonna happen because I do think a lot of it depends on how we as individuals choose to orient ourselves to what's happening. But I feel like by the very end of the year, um, there's an opportunity for a lot of actual real healing and unity to take place, both in this country and then kind of spreading through the world. Yeah. Might be a I, long I, shot, <laughs> but no, some of that, I mean, some of that's there. I think so. And here's the, here's the thing about predictions is, it's important for everyone to understand everyone is, has free will. We're all making choices. All of those choices impact the bigger picture. And that's why it's very difficult to make a, a, a especially a longer term prediction because there's so many choices, so many individuals that involve that outcome. And I, I pray for, you know, a positive, you know, least painful outcome <laughs> for yeah. the most people but there, even when you have something that's a painful lesson, there's always a silver lining. And I really feel that. And I also feel like whatever is happening in the collective, whatever painful lessons may be being learned, that there's also incredible opportunity for us individually. And that we also can still be good. We can still be safe. We can still have prosperity. So it's just, just important yeah. to, even though we're talking about some things and themes right now that are quite intense, to not get into fear about that, to, you know, kind of observe, know what's happening, you know, don't put it on a blank board fold and just try to ignore everything. But at the same time, especially if you're intuitive and you're paying attention, you, and pay, by, by paying attention, I mean, to your internal intuition, to the message from your spirit team, you can still navigate and, and do well. So it's important to, I mean, to just keep that in mind and not get yeah. into like, oh my God, if the sky is falling down, this is all going to be horrible. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, thank you for saying that. Yeah. And, and I actually feel like the, the upside, the, the potential upside and what the world wants to happen, what, you know, our higher selves want to happen coming out of last year and this year is that people actually, we actually get real freedom you know, and real abundance for the first time in our lives. I mean, mm. you know, the, the level to which people are poisoned from the moment they come into this world by corporations who are just greedy, right? You know, in government, people like politicians who are just making money on the side, like passing these laws that favor the pharma industry or the oil industry or, you know, whoever. It's like, we can stop all of that. And that's the utopian side of Aquarius, right? Is that over the next 20 years, because we have this great conjunction cycle that's in Aquarius for the first time since 14 something, 1300 something, 1400 something, um, hasn't happened in a long time. So this is a really like the opening of the Aquarian age. And I feel like the potential outcome is, you know, we can stop aging the way that we're used to aging. We can have basically zero point energy everybody has it so now you don't have to pay heat bills or you know gas for your car and you don't have to work so much you can do your thing that you love to do you know and have plenty to do that so i feel like that you know there is a really powerful positive side of this and maybe maybe part of laying out the other stuff is just to, so people are aware that like hey we got to make it through these checkpoints 
And we got to keep our hope up, you know, not give in. But definitely yeah. what wants to happen is that there's a, there's a golden age that wants to happen on earth, you know, and according to alternate, at least uh, kind of the new age, you know, weirdo, uh, what do they call that? All historians. I mean, you know, they're all, all cultures seem to have these references to there was a time when everybody got along and everybody had enough and it was all good. And I feel like that's what wants to happen in the next 10, 20, 30 years. I think it, there is a, lo a lot of room for things to be much easier, a lot more abundance and flow for people. And, and I really do believe that, for example, a lot of what we consider natural aging is literally just toxic systems that yeah. aren't allowing our body to heal. And that if we shift some of that, we could live much longer, much healthier for longer. So I do feel like a lot of that is trying to shift and then also from, from my perspective as a psychic, one of the things that happens is as we're trying to shift and release old, unhealthy, toxic patterns and situations, that old stuff tries really hard to hold on. So I feel like we're in that like last yeah. rows of like, oh, this is just awful. And I yeah. agree. It's, a, it's always darkest before the light. That phrase has been coming up over and over again in the last week. So if you're feeling very hopeless or if you're struggling or, or, you know, when you, if you see what's happening in the world, just, I just feel that, yes, there are some amazing things coming. And now that I've witnessed this pattern in my own life, like that I've, I've seen so many times when I'm having a really hard time. And then right after that, something amazing happened. So I feel like there's yeah. little cycles of this individually. And then there's also this in the collective, like our whole world, our nations, you know, et cetera. So I feel like we're definitely going through, it's kind of like growing pains, like these spurts of like, oh, that's all that yucky stuff we're purging out before we can have something awesome. Yeah, man, I, I can't even add anything to that. You said that perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, DK. Oh, that was beautiful. So I, I completely agree with, you know, what you're saying. Um, any other big alignments that we should be aware of and then also any recommendations that you have in terms of how to to ride these you know kind of big waves of, of change and drama that may be playing out for us uh i think that part of the good news is a lot of the really super heavy energy is front loaded this year so the beginning of the year yeah okay yeah i mean so that darkest before the dawn i mean it, feel like so many people are feeling that. I mean, when, you know, I, I talk to clients and just tuning into, um, psychically tuning into my community, I mean, just, people are just, have been flailing a little bit, you know, understandably. Uh, it's like, we have so much heavy energy going on around the Saturn and Uranus square energy, um, just in January. And I think by the time we get to Chinese New Year, which is the 14th of February, the 11th, something like that. Um, in, in the first two weeks of February, we're going to start feeling that tension dissolve. Um, March 4th or 5th is another big um, stepping stone where Mars moves out of Taurus. So Mars doesn't, Mars doesn't do very well in Taurus. He, it's a bad place, kind of a challenging place for him. And, um, so there could be this sense of just being locked into doing the same thing. Even when I know if I could just get over here a little bit, I, everything would be better. But there's this like, almost like, you know, marching to the, I'm going to make it to the top of that hill or something. So once that breaks up uh, March 4th, I feel like that's another place where some of the pressure comes off. Um, May and June look a, like late May and June look a little bit dicey and, you know, there's going to be some challenges. Birthday. Yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man. I looked at my birthday astrology and I was like, oh no. <laughs> um, but you know, it's, Hey, we're still here. If you survive 2020 and you're still somewhat mentally healthy and you can speak clear English, good words, and you know, you still got your health. I mean, Hey, we're in a good place, right? We can, we're so resilient as humans. So yeah. I do feel like the second half of the year, um, once we get through, there's an eclipse on June 10th in Gemini. Um, and that is the first eclipse in several, I won't go into the technicalities of this, but uh, Bernadette Brady had the Cero system of eclipses. It's a way of like grouping eclipses over thousands of years, you know, a couple oh, thousand years. 
Yeah, so they belong to these families. And this is the first Eclipse family in several years to come in that's not super negative, like just super dark. I mean, the last couple were, well, we're seeing it play out. And then when we get to um, December, the, the so there's a solar eclipse in Gemini, June 10th, solar eclipse in Sag, um, Sagittarius, December 4th. And that one's actually one of the most positive eclipse families that is, has been charted. So, I mean, that one is like, we were all like seeing Kumbaya, you know, in the perfect society. And I don't know how we get from that here to there, but I really see that as a, as a big reason for optimism. And even last year, like in the middle of last year, I was tuning in with my beloved on, you know, what, what should we do next? How should we configure things? And we both just kind of got this sense of just stay put, keep moving, you know, keep, keep doing what we have to do, but don't try to do anything big or crazy um, until at least the second half of 2021. And then when I looked at these eclipse signatures, I was like, oh yeah, that mm -hmm. totally makes okay. sense. So, and so is the, the first eclipse uh, in the year then, is that June 10th or is there one before then? There's one before then. So we have uh, lunar eclipse in Sagittarius, May 26th, solar eclipse in Gemini, June 10th. So that's the first eclipse season of the year. Okay. And yeah, true to recent form, Mercury will be retrograde in Gemini during that time period. So oh my that's going to yeah, be a, a really fun a, one. That's a lot. Yeah. So my birthday is May 20th. So it's like right out, you lighter around that building. And so, and can you just share with eclipses, what generally is the, are some facts about eclipses? Because I feel like I have an idea, but I think you could just refresh for people. Obviously each yeah. one has its own sign and different things, but just in general about eclipses as a whole. So we usually have, um, and last year was a big exception because we had six eclipses instead of four. And just so just adding an extra layer of things. But, but this year, 2021, um, will be normal eclipse season. So we have two eclipse seasons. And in each of those seasons, there are two eclipses um, two weeks apart. So eclipses are like super powered full moons or new moons. And they, they function kind of like, um, like there's a huge energy dump into the earth system during those times. A lot of times, you know, if it's not hitting something directly in your chart, you might just notice those two weeks in May and June as like, man, everybody's really spun out. You know, people are like really manic or they're really depressed or, or really angry or whatever. So a lot of people, um, you know, people who don't know why it's happening will just sort of get really spazzed out during those periods because there's all this energy coming in and, and it's trying, and what they're trying, what the eclipse energy is trying to do is realign us and kind of clear us out and get us back on our path. Well, <laughs> back on the path of, uh, tell me if you can still hear me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Of, uh, you know, what we came here to do as a soul. So, yeah, does that... Kind of yeah, answer. yeah, I think that's a great way to describe them as like super full moons and super new moons in the sense of like it's a lot of power and energy. And one thing that I like to look at during full moons, for example, is like what's showing up that's not aligned? What is really bothering me? Because those things will show up so much harder during full moon. Yeah. And it's the same thing during the eclipse time. And if we're paying attention, then it often will bring about more rapid change, you know as a result of whatever is kind of coming to light uh, during the full moons, new moons, and then the eclipses. So yeah, yeah, a lot of times there's like quick and sudden and maybe dramatic shifts from my perspective. Yeah. That yeah. will happen as a result. Yeah, a lot of times if an eclipse really hits, um, you know, your sun or your moon or your ascendant directly, like within a couple of degrees, those would be the times that you can look back, you know, you can look back at, at your chart and the eclipses of the past years and i mean i've done this and it's like oh that was when i moved overnight to a new place you know and it was like this eclipse hit my fourth house or whatever but you know again a lot of times it's more of a sense of okay yeah what do i need to tune into and new moons what do i new moon eclipses solar eclipses what can i let go of and what's a new beginning i can make in this part of the chart so that's kind of cool for you that it's coming after your birthday yeah because you'll get like than, a nice rather than before <laughs> or, or right on it yeah. yeah I I just hope you know this this past year was like on my birthday I remember it was 
like we had just had restaurants open for takeaway only in Colorado. So that was like a big deal, but we, I could like sit outside and eat takeout food. And a year before I had been in Cannes, the French Riviera for the Cannes Film Festival and like yachts and, you know, glamorous yeah. parties and in like a gown and, you know, and it was just like this, such an amazing dichotomy of the, the you know, the differences. So I'm like, if, if I just have even anything that's, a little bit more social, I'll be, <laughs> I'll be happy. After this right. <laughs> I'm well, sure a I'm lot of people can you relate. Be. Thank you. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of people can relate with any kind of, you know, celebration or birthday, or whatever this year. So, yeah. um, you know, but it's been also a great year for really appreciating what you have and gratitude and, and appreciating what you have had. Like, I feel like it really brought perspective to me about like, wow, I've had some pretty amazing experiences. And I, I know that those things are going to come in again. It's just being patient and just doing the work of whatever we're being called to do in this moment yeah. and not getting caught up in the like, poor me. It's, I mean, we have our moments. I have our, my moments with that too, but the, the more we can just, you know, find the silver lining and be in gratitude about that. Maybe after we've cried yeah. or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let it out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think it's real, feeling our feelings is real. It's always important, but it's really important. There's a lot of air energy this year, you know, mm. so we've got the Aquarius energy and then all the Mercury retrogrades are in air signs. Two of the, or one of the four eclipses is in Gemini air sign. So, you know, it can be really easy to like kind of escape into media, you know, or, or something that's thinking, talking, being on the internet, whatever. And I feel like, I'm glad you brought that up because it's like that's a prerequisite for being staying healthy, mentally healthy, emotionally healthy, spiritually healthy this year. It's like there's a lot, man. And if you're psychic or empathic, you know, it's like our capacity to withstand like all of the collective angst and stuff is it feels pushed to the extreme sometimes. Yeah, I think one of the things that this past year has really forced me to do is really work on my energy and energy tools and clearing out unhealthy beliefs, patterns, and perception of obstacles. Uh, so I did a ton of, you know, emotion code sessions. I did a lot of tapping and a lot of just like meditating and, you know, things that are just like, okay, this is overwhelming me right now. Um, you know, got it. What can I do to shift this? And, you know, on the one hand, that's, you know, that it's not like that's fun stuff when you're doing it, but I will say, I just feel so much lighter and freer as a person. So when things do kind of pick up and feel lighter and there's not as much drama. I know that it's going to be that much better. And also even with this year, uh, all the challenges, I still overall had a good year, you know? So I, I, yeah. I just want to give everyone hope, even if it seems like it's just chaotic and intense, that it's, you still can navigate a good path within that. Yeah, it's, it's possible for all of us. I really feel that. Yeah. And I, I do feel like there's protection for those of us who are here anchoring the frequencies of healing and evolution, yeah. you know, positive evolution. I really do. Yeah. I, I mean, I had a great year last year. It was challenging, but I mean, so many, you know, I had so many great experiences and yeah. I feel the same. And, and one of the things that's just coming up to mention is um, boundaries as a whole is really coming up and, and, that if we don't have boundaries or if we didn't have boundary, good energy boundaries, spiritual boundaries, emotional boundaries last year. And if we don't continue that into this year, that will be challenging. I saw a really great uh, post. It was like a, a, um, just a, one of those photo quotes uh, on Facebook the other day. And it was saying like, you know, if, if you don't agree with something, if someone posts something or says something you don't agree with, you don't have to have this combative conflict approach or response <laughs> yeah and i just think like it's important to say that like you know so much of our energy is like are we are we reacting to things outside of us you know just to remember we do have a choice even with things that we don't like how we're responding um to that personally in our in our circle, in our circumstance. And, and I'm not talking about things relating to injustice, like to be clear, I'm talking about things relating yeah, to yeah. like, I have a different opinion than that person and I'm gonna let them have it or something like that. That's the kind right. of thing I'm talking about. Like anytime we really flare with anger at someone like that, it's, I love that quote by Buddha. Like, it's like, you know, getting angry 
at another person is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Like we really hold on to that. So more than ever this past year and this coming year, I think it's really important to keep that in mind and just be really mindful of our energy and what's triggering us. And if something is really triggering us, it's like, yes, something is there that maybe you don't like that maybe isn't, you know, good, but also what can I do to shift my response to it so that it's, it's less unpleasant for me. It's less frustrating or painful or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's so important. And, you know, I feel like one of the things that, that the Saturn Uranus squares are going to tune us into if we're available to listen is it's not us versus them. You know, it's not me, the, the right wing MAGA dude versus you, the left wing woke person or (laughs) vice versa. Right. It's like, I mean, it's amazing how many people have like decided that, um, that I'm a dyed in the wool MAGA person because I questioned some things about, you know, Corona, the COVID thing on, online. But um, it's really, you know, like you said, I mean, anything that triggers me, that's showing me something within myself that I get to work on if I want to be a whole individuated person, right? I, I agree with you. And I really would love for everyone to just catch themselves if they start to make assumptions or stereotypes about a person because of a particular belief that they have um, or an affiliation that they have. Because I think that's that's really what lends to this, this incredibly divisive energy and also literally violent energy <laughs> that yeah. often is not productive. Like it, it doesn't help us heal it just kind of wounds us even more deeply so I think that's a really good point thank you for bringing that up yeah and I mean you know I I don't know if we agree on this or not but I do believe there's that in 3d reality there is such a thing as evil you know so I believe that there are forces um a lot of which are non-human I mean I I followed the Toltec um you know tradition for for a long time and you know they see it as they they call this They say there's this inorganic entity called the parasite that has infected humans, you know, and sometimes you hear it called a fear virus. Northern North America, Native Americans have another name for it. I don't remember at this time, but um, the whole media apparatus, you know, the corporate media apparatus is really focused on dividing us and they don't care which side of the line you fall as long as you agree to be divided. They don't care if you're total right wing, you know, extremist conspiracy theorist or a total left wing, you know, censorship, you know, like whatever, whatever the the left wing equivalent of that is. They just want us fighting against each other because that's where that parasite draws its power. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I do feel that there are kind of parasitic forces. So whether you use the term evil or, or, whatever you call it, but unhelpful. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not, <laughs> not, <laughs> don't have yeah. our best interests in mind. Exactly. Well, oh and, no, yeah, sorry, well, my that's, battery's that's dying here. here. That's okay, well, we're, we're about to wrap up anyway, so I'll just um, kind of finish here. But yeah, I, I agree with you that there's, there's forces that have their own interests and not our own interests in mind. And we just need to always be mindful. We need to always be mindful of that. And it's important to, to think about and really be aware of what are our thoughts, you know, what mental track we're going down. And this is a message I've gotten about thoughts. And I'm putting that in quotes that if a thought is negative, hateful, judgmental about yourself, about others, first of all, it's not a true feeling. Um, and it's also not coming from a source of the light. It's not coming from an angel or spirit guide. And those thoughts are coming in oftentimes from an external source, meaning like we're psychically hearing it and they have their own manipulation in mind. And the more we, we start to question that and just think like, wait, is this true? And even if it is, if you think it's true or not, is it helpful? Like, is this helpful for me to engage with this? Cause most of the time, even if you might say like, yeah, I feel like that's true, but wait, does this help me? Does this help the other person? Is this something that is, leading to a future that I want to participate in for myself. So the the more that we all do that, regardless of which, again, which side of the political perspective you're in, the better it will be for all of us. Because yeah, like you said, in a lot of ways, it doesn't matter which, which side of whatever you're on, as long as you're feeding into that hate, that divisiveness, that anger, 
some there's yeah. a beast that is being fed by that, whether that's literal yeah. or metaphorical. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And that beast doesn't care. The beast is going to eat you in the end. It doesn't matter how like aligned you are with what you're supposed to be thinking or saying, right? Like whether you're, you're like, I'm on the right side, I'm on the correct side of the line. So, so to avoid right and left, right? But, and I'm doing everything. I'm, I'm like completely woke and I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm canceling the right people and I'm tuning into the right people and I'm doing all my whatever. Beast is going to eat you. I mean, it doesn't <laughs> care, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, and again, I'm trying not to make this sound scary because the, the beauty of all of this is that these kind of parasitic beings actually are very weak. Anything that is parasitic doesn't have its own power and it derives its power from, from other beings, from others, from those it's feeding on. And all we have to do is just be like, oh, I'm not going to feed that. And then it just loses its power. So I feel like there's a, yeah. there's a lot of uh, awakening and a growing awareness, at least for some people about this. And we just have to just really be aware of our thoughts, of our feelings, like, is this supportive of what we want to create? And it might be a bumpy ride, <laughs> but I do yeah. feel like, like it's going to a good place. And, and that even one of us making some of these changes has a huge ripple effect on the world. Huge. So, huge. so for, for us to understand our own incredible impact on the world right now. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I, honestly, that's the, you just said it there. It, it only has the power that we give it. Right. And it depends on all of its power by tricking us into not seeing it for what it is. So that if we have that intention, I'm going to keep seeing my truth. I'm going to keep asking to be shown my truth. And what's the highest vibration for me? What's the best, you know, action for me in this moment, right? We, that's how we change everything. It is. And it's, it's that once both incredibly simple and incredibly complex at the same time. So, you know, just to, just to make that clear, it sounds easy in a way, but it's the action <laughs> of it when, when you're in the moment, yeah. because I feel like that um, these light and dark forces, both sides are very intelligent and the dark force, whether you believe it as an actual being or just energies, you know, that are the yin and the yang or whatever, there's a lot of intelligence to it. And, and there's this knowledge of what are your triggers. So whatever oh, yeah. is your button, it's like, they're going to hit it hard. Yeah. And, and it's a telepathic situation. So whenever yeah. you're being triggered, I just think it's, it's so hard sometimes in the moment, just like pause, step back. And I've had anger flares just as much as the, as the next person. I totally understand, but I do feel like I'm getting better about just being like, wait, is this, first of all, is this even mine? Oh, is this man. huge question. Yeah. yeah, is this even mine? It, and, and as empaths, this is something we have to be constantly asking ourselves. So whether you believe in, you know, entities or whatever, but just literally just energy wise, we have to ask, is this mine? Is this helpful? You know, do I want to engage with this? And if not, a, a, one thing that works for me is just, you know, visualizing the light to help clear your energy field, asking Archangel Michael and the angels to help clear your field, as well as anything that might be, Feeding the beast this negative energy and again I'm putting the beast in quotes because I just me it's it's like a metaphorical thing it's energetic but it's not like the beast actually I'm just using it as a word I feel like it's not actually that scary I feel like I'm just going to share a brief um yeah visual I got one time because I was doing a reading and I saw this like scary looking what looked like a demon and if you've ever seen the movie um legend have you seen that no it's, a movie so. Tom, it's one of the Tom Cruise's first movies and Tim Curry plays like this demon character and he's like red skin super muscly giant red horns like you know super scary looking and I saw this thing and I was like wow that looks really intense you know <laughs> <laughs> but I asked the guys because there's something about the energy felt off from the, and I asked like what does this thing really look like and it was this tiny puny thing Wow. But even psychically, there's illusion. And I feel like yeah. even this idea of the beast is, is shared with us because it evokes this fear and terror. If we're just like, wait a second, what are you really? And also, if we just remember that what gives it its power is us, it just yeah. literally just completely shifts the, the energy. So anyway, just, Man, I just thought to so show that. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I, it's like, I, I really thank you for saying that too, because I need to keep being reminded of this also, 
that the only thing we have to do to change society too, not just our own internal psychic, emotional, mental space, but to change society is withdraw our power, take our power back from things that don't work for us, from things that we think are not good. We don't have to be online trying to argue with people and, you know, that never works, right? Yelling at somebody that you're wrong is just not a good recipe for changing anybody's life. It's literally so against our interest most of the time to operate that way. And a lot of the most powerful shifts in society have come from people, you know, being peaceful or quietly and thoughtfully making their case. Um, now, yeah. I know this doesn't always work, but it, it, it often does. And the other piece is it's, it's about it, our thoughts, like literally where are we giving our energy, where are we giving our thoughts? And then also where is our money going? Because money is energy and what are we supporting with our money? So yeah. these are all things for us to consider. And even one person has a ripple effect, it's massive. And if we're all doing that, then it's, it's really important. So, wow, that's got into some really like theoretical yeah. <laughs> topics I didn't expect that's to That's Aquarius. That's, that's <laughs> the Aquarian age. You know, there's a lot of theory, a lot of big picture. But yeah, I mean, I think it's really important because we do have such an amazing opportunity this year to start taking back the world, you know, yeah. for, for people and for the animals and for the plants and, you know, all the good stuff. So. Yeah, I and one that. closing message I'm feeling to say is that when you have someone that has a completely different belief than you, there is a reason they have that belief, even if you can't see that from your perspective. And that doesn't mean you have to agree with it, but just to, to understand that there is a reason and that we can have compassion. And the more we try to, you know, I guess, re understand that, then the better things go. Yeah. Well, well, this has been awesome, DK. I, so I love this conversation. And is there anything else you want to share? And of course, please tell people like, how can they connect with you? I know you do, you know, obviously private personal readings. Do you do relationship readings as well? Or just like one-on-one -on -one releasing? Yeah. Okay. I had somebody ask about a relationship reading the other day. And I was like, you know what? I've never had a relationship reading that I didn't feel really helpful. I think it's so helpful for people to see like, you know, even if the people didn't stay together, at least they split up with a little more understanding, you know? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I do, do personal readings. Um, so that's dkbrainer.com is my astrology website. And then I also have a community, a very utopian um, community <laughs> kind of organization, cosmicfire.org. So uh, I got my player shirt on Oh, nice. I did yeah. notice that. It's a really pretty design. <laughs> oh, thanks. Um, I, yeah, I didn't draw it myself. I'm a terrible artist, but um, in that sense. But yeah, we, we have a, a community. We do like lots of uh, guided meditations and um, there's astrology tarot readers and stuff. So, I mean, I feel like that's part of where my heart is now is like trying to bring the artists and the visionaries and the empaths and the creators together. So that I feel like the more we resonate with one another and encourage one another, the faster things will change into what we want to see. So yeah, cosmic fire. I love it. Well, thank you so yeah. much, DK. It's really been a pleasure to connect with you again. Yeah, me too. Thanks, Laura. And thank you so much, everyone, for listening. As, as always, I really appreciate connecting with you in this special way for the podcast. If you want to learn more or connect with me, my website is healingpowers.net. You can also find me at Twitter at that Laura Powers, Instagram at Laura Powers 44, and on Facebook at Healing Powers. Many blessings to you. And I hope that this year brings you uh, wonderful things that you didn't expect and that you have abundance, peace, and prosperity.